and that each each element is substituted in. I want to function. One nice side effect of this thing is, for instance, you can write a it was in the original paper. Uh, I like this example. Uh, you can write a printf function that is type safe and you can't, uh, you know, you know, like have the errors you have today. You can think the check that compile time is, you know, uh, these kind of things. You wouldn't think about it at first. Uh, 
Um, so, uh, for instance, uh, using using uh, the decal type in your return type makes makes it easy. So that if you have your your add function here, if C plus U doesn't work for your particular template arguments, then uh, when we when we try to deduce the, the template arguments, when then plug them into the into the function signature, we say, wait, we can't do T plus U, and so that that template just disappears from overload resolution. And uh, C plus plus eleven uh, harnesses this a lot more and introduces various traits for testing uh, characteristics of of types. And the uh, enable if uh, template, you can to, to make things more formal. So often in your return type, you can say if, if, more explicitly, I want this template to only apply to uh, scalar types, for instance. There, there are lots of other uh, predicates that you can ask about types. Uh, in, if, if you don't like putting the enable if in your return type, you can also put it in the default template argument. Um, one shortcoming of that is that the default template arguments are not part of the, uh, the signature of the template. So if you're doing that, you need to make very sure that uh, if you have multiple versions of the template with uh, different speed and conditions, that they are mutually exclusive. Otherwise, you could end up with uh, uh, conflicts. Now, L values and R values. In C and C++ 98, we have L values and R values. And L values, which come from the, the two sides of an assignment. Uh, the L value on the left side, uh, it has object identity. It, it designates a particular, a particular location. You can take its address, usually. Um, in C++, it can have it can have some dynamic type that's different from its static type. It could it could be uh, the the L value could be a reference to a base type that actually indicates uh, an object of a derived type. And an R value, an R value has no object identity, so you can copy it around as much as you want, and it might not live in memory, and it it. It can't have a dynamic type that's different from its static type. Now, a lot of people uh, who were writing C++ containers were complaining that it was difficult to get a good performance when you're kind of passing a container around. Uh, that either you had to pass it around by, by pointer uh, in which case you had to deal with ownership. Or you ended up copying everything over and over. I wanted to be able to pass uh, containers or, or other objects uh, using what we call move semantics. And uh, an, an example of the issue is uh, with the, the swap function, where it, you want to swap two variables. First you create a temporary variable from one, two assignments and you end up having having swap. Now if if copying your this type T is expensive, then you've done, done three copies when you really didn't didn't want a third a third cop, uh, copy of the of any of the data at all. You just wanted to move them back and forth. So C11 uh, introduces R value references which are uh, references that can bind to an R value, whereas traditional C++ references are constrained to only bind to, to L values. In fact, R, R value references can only bind to R values. They can't bind to L values. They're disjoint. And so uh, if you know that what you have is an, is an R value, then you know that you, that you can do what you want to it, and, uh, and nobody's going to care. So, for instance, a, a move assignment operator, if, you, if your class has uh, all of its representation stored in a pointer, then when you're moving from one object to another, you can just steal the representation, zero out the, uh, the old one, and then let it go. 
the only the only constraint from a move operation is that uh, the object you're moving from still has to be destructible. So, uh, in in this first example here, uh, where we have uh, a equals f ren ren f returns by value, so that's that that produces an R value, and the assignment uh, just moves from from it. Mostly, uh, us users of C plus uh, plus shouldn't have to worry about uh, R value references. This is mostly uh, library level stuff. So if we want to write our uh, swap function to take advantage of uh, move semantics, uh, since since anything anything with a name is an is an L value, uh, so here A and B are L values, but in this case we know that we want to move, uh, so we can we can force that using the the move function. Then once we once we have uh, move semantics, uh, we can get uh, perfect forwarding of, of functions from one type of function to whatever else by first using uh, R value reference in the declaration of the parameters. Uh, type deduction works in such a way that if you if you pass an R value to to the, the second template. Uh, the, the deduced type of the parameter will be, uh, both if, if you pass an R value, the, the result will be an R value reference. If you pass an L value, you'll be able to do some L value. <coughs> and then the, the forward uh, function helps, uh, adjusts the, the arguments appropriately for forwarding to the next version. The same lexical form as the logical end. Pardon? The same lexical form as the logical end. Lexical. Yes. Yes, it is. Same yes. Same with the double parentheses on the left shift. Can you expand on the over? No, it, it's, 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 it's not the same because it just only appears in declaration context. Uh, yeah, there's there's no ambiguity because. Uh, because they appear in different contexts. Uh, the, the, forward, the forward function, uh, basically, if, uh, if it deals with the fact that even if the parameter is, has an R value reference type, uh, within, within the body of the function, that parameter is an L value. And so the forward function, basically, what it does is well, if if it was deduced to be an R value reference type, then we convert it. To, then we convert T to be an R value reference, or to be an, uh, if T was deduced to be an L value reference type, then uh, we leave it to L value. Well, the definition of the forward. It's not. <laughs> why is it necessary in this case, or is it just? A, I don't see how why it's necessary. Why why you don't I just write T plus H? Uh, because if you just write T. So you don't preserve the L value R value distinction that uh, the arguments to add and add. That's what uh, using it for. So, so, so if, if operator wants to be the yeah. measure, if there's an L value for the moment and R value for the moment, take the other version. Yes. 
small yes. yes. I'm learning small yes. 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 yes.
compilation to say out. Does this mean, does it go in the <coughs> order of the function in there? And you don't see the body of the function? Does that go in It needs to be declared and then accept. Does it mean you get around that error or does it mean that it does not match? It's a compile time error. Very few people will ever have to worry about. This is this is really for uh, people who are 
building temple libraries. And the users, users don't have to care. Um, if if it was a uh, if you if your constructor was taking a, a list of of a, of a type that had a bunch of different constructors, then then yes, you could have like your first element be initialized from one argument, and your second element be initialized from eight hundred arguments, uh, as long as they all uh, are suitable initializers for the element type. <coughs> Something lots 
simpler. Um, so introducing lambda expressions, uh, which are just a, a shorthand for writing uh, function-like objects. Longer delimiters. 